Okay, folks, let's take a look at the Articles of Confederation in this uh, video lecture. Now, um, if we take ourselves back to the Revolution, and we see that we won the Revolutionary War, and not a big idea on the test, but home field advantage, we wanted it more. Um, we eventually are going to uh, kind of hold our breath and uh, win that war. It's almost like a guerrilla war concept that uh, the British soldiers don't want to be here, the British soldiers are fighting because they have to, and the colonists, of course, are fighting because they're defending their families and their homes. Although it's interesting to note, only one-third of colonists actually supported the revolution. Blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, we win, and it's time to set up a new government. Our first government was actually formed in the beginning during the Revolutionary War, and it was guided by a document called the Articles of Confederation. So we want to get this document down. Um, always a question on the test, and it's a pretty important concept. If we go back and we remember um, the Tina and the Ike Turner um, concept, this idea that the colonists under Ike, under England, suffered greatly, and they learned to resent power. They learned that power, authority, took your natural rights away. So you can imagine when these guys were given the, the, the ability to create their own form of government, their own egg, that they're not going to create a big strong one because they're fearful of authority. They're fearful of creating um, another Ike Turner. So the major concept here is that the Articles of Confederation sucked. And they sucked because the feds were too weak. Now, I'm going to do this definition a million times in the video lectures, but remember, our form of government is federalism. Let's say it together. Federalism is the division of power between the states and the federal government. So we always have that balance. Even under the Articles of Confederation, there is a federal government and there are separate state governments. However, unlike today, where we know who our daddy is, our daddy, of course, is the uh, federal government, Back in the day, under the Articles, there was so much fear of a, of, of, of a bad dad, of a dad with a belt, that we didn't give dad the belt. We didn't give the federal government the power it needed to raise the family correctly. So let's go with that analogy, that under the Articles of Confederation, we're a family, we have a father, we have a federal government, we have children, we have states. However, the power's all messed up. The children have all the power. The states have all of the power. What did the feds not have that they needed? Well, under the Articles, the feds didn't have the power to wage war, raise armies, collect taxes, um, really pass laws to do anything. Under the Articles of Confederation, each state was given one representative. In order to change the actual document and the actual articles, you needed unanimous consent. Man, if I go to the donut store with three of my friends, we can't pick out a donut. So I can imagine 13 separate interests, different kinds of kids trying to agree on, on what dad gets to do is ridiculous. The Articles of Confederation are going to fail. And they specifically fail due to the illustration of this concept. And this illustration comes through an historical event, and that event is Shea's Rebellion. Uh, Daniel Shea was a farmer. He was just kind of this poor old farmer in Massachusetts. And after the Revolutionary War, he saw that he was paying an enormous amount of money to the government of Massachusetts, but he wasn't seeing anything in return. So him and some of his farmer friends grabbed their pitchforks and they marched um, up to the Capitol in, in Massachusetts, and they demanded that um, the government resolve this conflict, the state government. And when the state government failed to do that, Shea started a rebellion, almost like a mini American revolution in Massachusetts. He's basically doing it for the same reasons. He sees that his natural rights are being violated. He feels as though he's being taxed with real, no real representation. And he's living by the words of Jefferson in the Declaration when, when the chicken and the egg, when the egg is bad, squash the egg. And he's doing that. The problem for Massachusetts is they're having a hard time squashing this rebellion. And when they get on the phone and they go, Dad, help, boop, we're sorry, but this number is no longer connected. There is no real federal government. This is an illustration that we need a stronger dad. 
that we need something to tie us together, that we need some power, we need some authority in order to get some things done. So the Articles of Confederation fail following this illustration from Shea's Rebellion. And now it's time to go to Philadelphia to sit down with all of our friends and to figure out a new constitution, one that strikes a balance but gives enough power to dad in order to run the family correctly. So, Articles of Confederation, Articles of Confederation, Articles of Confederation.